AEW Dynamite review for brothers and sisters. Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. Episode 2. AEW Dynamite. And in my opinion, everybody, guess what? AEW Dynamite last week was not a mirage. It's really a good show. Two for two in my opinion. So let's take a swig of coffee and get into it. Good show again from AEW. Tag team tournament for the titles. Young Bucks versus Private Party. And uh, hmm, just really quick on this. Okay, of course, the athleticism was off the charts in this match. Of course, you know what this match was. But I just want to say, I want to ask everybody listening, if they remember the AEW haters at the beginning of the year that said, oh, they're going to have a TV show. Oh, the four executive vice presidents are just going to put themselves over and take all the titles for themselves. First match in the tag team tournament. Private party defeats the Young Bucks. Good job. Good job, haters. You nailed that one. Pretty good match. Good start for the show. Off the charts athleticism, like I said. Private party goes over the Bucks in the first match of the tournament. Love it. Love it. Bucks don't need it right now, do they? Private party could use it. Makes sense to me. One wish that I have for AEW, though, the private party gimmick, the name itself, the gin and juice move, excellent. Love that the move is based on the characters. So easy, right? So easy. Yet, it's confusing in other companies. It's too confusing. But I want to say, AEW, a couple more vignettes of these guys. I don't think they're using these guys to the best of their abilities. I would actually like to see, maybe after every AEW Dynamite, a little private party. Maybe you can actually uh, give fans, maybe 20 fans in attendance, maybe uh, give them 15 minutes with the boys and they could be a part of the show for next week. You know, the private party. Let them be involved in a skit, whatever. I want to see more private party. I want to know more about the party. What goes down at these parties? That's my question. I love it. I love me some private party. Good match to kick off the show. Second segment. Out comes the five guys that we've been asking all week. Is this a, is this a faction? Were these just five heels having fun in the ring? We got all our answers. Chris Jericho, Jake Hagar, is it Hagar? I mean, Jericho was calling him Hagar, probably because of Sammy Hagar, because of rock and roll, because of Van Halen. I think it's Hager, but regardless, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz, the five come out. Jericho gives us all the answers we need. A couple things about this. Le Champion of AEW is fantastic. He is unbelievable. This guy can fart and it would get over. Everything he says, everything he says, gets over. Couple things here. Start it with Sammy. He said he looks like a Spanish god. Look how sexy he is. Crowd pops. I'm telling you, this guy could say anything and the the crowd will pop. It's fantastic. Santana and Ortiz looked good. Viva La Raza. Of course, you get the Eddie Guerrero chant on his birthday week here. I love that Jake Hager is back in pro wrestling. He just stood there stone-faced, deadpan, loved it. We the People chant starts up. Jericho shuts it down with We the People sucks, and it's dead and buried. Crowd pops. A stupid idea from Bad Creative, and all that's gone. AEW chant. It's that simple. But there's one minor detail to Jericho's promo 
that some people on Monday night or Friday night won't be able to understand. It's not scripted. The audience was, as he was talking, the audience started up the We the People chant. And he shut it down immediately and flipped it and got the crowd to pop twice. That's a master, people. That's a master. Pro wrestling, promo, master. Chris Jericho. I want to say another thing about this segment. We are the inner circle. Of course, you're welcome. He does the mic drop. Inner circle. Do I like the name? It's okay. It's all right. Obviously, the fans liked it. JR immediately says, you might as well start printing the t-shirts now. Well, I don't know, 30 minutes later, the AEW Pro Wrestling Tees shop site crashed. There you go. That simple. A faction is born. Five guys. Boom. I don't know about you guys, but I love a good faction in pro wrestling. And this is going to be a good faction. Now, the only thing I want to say, one negative, actually the only negative about this segment. I love that Hager was standing, staring, stone-faced. No one should ever interact with him. I love it. But Ortiz was doing his thing on the left. Santana was doing his thing on the right. They were both fine. Sammy was doing his thing right behind Jericho. He was fine. But I want to see more interaction between those three guys. Instead of standing there doing your thing, would it be so hard to, and I don't know if this was Tony Khan directed or whatever, but why not move around a little bit as Chris Jericho's talking? You know what I mean? Why can't Ortiz go to the other side of the ring and look at the fans and do that weird tongue thing? You know, make it look more natural because it was a little bit stuffy. And I know it's the second show and I'm nitpicking and it's a new faction. But it just didn't look like, you know, everybody, I'll tell you what, AEW haters are going to compare this to NWO. I don't know if they are yet, but I'm sure it's coming. So picture Hogan talking, what were Hall and Nash doing? They were interacting with each other. They were playing off Hogan. You know, they were looking at the crowd, you know, blah, blah, blah. Got to get it more natural. But I'm really interested in seeing where this goes with these guys. Third match, Darby, Darby Allen defeats. Jimmy Havoc, the winner, gets a title shot next week. Darby Allen is fighting Chris Jericho for the title next week. Decent match. I'll give it a decent. Not that my opinion matters, but guess what? You're listening. <laughs> Joke's on you. Fourth segment, women's match. Aubrey Edwards, love her. Shout out, Aubrey Edwards. Next match, Moxley versus Spears. Tully Blanchard in this corner. Pock on commentary. This was a really good match. And I can't believe when I look at Sean Spears that he was the perfect 10 guy. I can't believe it's the same guy. I am like totally floored by how AEW took this guy and completely erased the perfect 10 from him. I don't know how they did it in such a short time. It's amazing. He's Sean Spears. It's... It's so easy. What they, they brought him in, and Perfect Ten didn't come with him. He came in and made a name for himself, and they set him up perfectly by hitting Cody with the chair and Tully Blanchard and on and on it goes. It's great. Great job with this guy. Great job with this guy. Ty Dillinger, Perfect Ten, the gimmick, it didn't make sense to me because he was a face saying, I'm the Perfect Ten. And that's what his character was. That was it. No depth whatsoever. Sean Spears is a heel with Tully Blanchard taking a shot at Cody Rhodes to get himself over. There's already more depth. There are already more layers to this guy in two weeks of TV time, but, you know, two months than the whole run of the perfect 10 in WWE. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Very good match, like I said. After the match is where it got interesting. Omega came down with a barbed wire broom and a barbed wire bat, and he rolls the bat to Moxley. As soon as Moxley picks it up, Omega gets jumped from behind by Pac. Pac. Excuse me. Pac. I've got to put that in my noodle. Pac. He jaw jacks with Moxley before he leaves, and then 
You know, Moxley didn't take advantage of the opportunity like a true heel would. He just threw the bat and left Omega laying. So I think that was very interesting. I'm going to say right there is, you know, character proof that Moxley is a tweener and Pac is a full-fledged heel and Omega is the true babyface. So anybody that's complaining about that right now, and I'm sure that's going to get complaints too. Oh, Moxley, if that was, oh, Moxley should, no, 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 no. Fine with that. Moving out of that though is going to get interesting with three of those guys because you know at one point Pac is going to piss off Mox and his focus is going to go from Omega to to Pac. A couple possibilities there. It's going to be cool. Last match, your main event. And I want to put I want to get ask you guys a question after I get through this a little bit. But Dustin Rhodes, Hangman Page. They come into the ring. And of course, JR mentions how much Hangman reminds him of Barry Windham. I thought, hmm. I kind of see where he's going, you know, with the chaps and the blonde hair and the southern thing. And, of course, Dusty tug with Wyndham at one time. and Now you got his son tagging with Hangman, who, I don't know, I'm a pretty big Barry Wyndham fan from the past, but there's something about Hangman, and I'm going to come back to that because I have a question for you guys listening. But uh, this match ends with Jericho. Judas effect on Dustin Rhodes. Decent match. Decent. But anytime Jericho's in the ring, uh, you know, everybody's transfixed, as I am. As well. A beatdown ensues, and all hell breaks loose in this segment. So you had running after running after running. Hager, Sammy, and Jericho beating down Dustin. Page gets back up, gets decked by Hager. The chair shot in his face was pretty good probably because you couldn't see the whole thing those two guys take off fighting each other to the back obviously that's going to set off a match Hager versus Hangman I'm in Cody Chant starts up lights go out for some reason I don't get that Cody's in the ring from there LAX hits the ring from there, MJF hits the ring, teases like maybe he's joining the inner circle, but he doesn't. He helps Cody. The Bucks come out for some help. Jericho heads back up to the ramp eventually, and Darby Allen with a flying knee off a skateboard coming down the ramp hits Jericho, and that hypes a, the match for next week for his uh, title fight against Jericho. Here's my question. When I saw, and you guys tell me down in the comments, if you will, when I saw MJF come out in the suit and the scarf, but with Cody in the ring, in the suit and the blonde hair, and seeing Tully Blanchard early on in the night, and JR saying how much Hangman reminds him of Barry Windham. Two-part question for you people listening. If... They would go with a new generation horseman. Are you buying in what I'm thinking? What my little eye in my brain is seeing in that segment, putting all that together is your Ric Flair being Cody Rhodes, your new Tully Blanchard in MJF. You got Sean Spears, who is actually with Tully Blanchard. You got Hangman Page as the Barry Windham, and Tully Blanchard becomes the J.J. Dillon of the group. Okay, so I'm not sure who's the tag team. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't put it together. But it just hit me when I saw MJF in the suit with Cody at that moment with the blonde hair like Flair. So the question is, would you be interested in seeing that? Now, we already have the inner circle who is reminiscent of a gang-style faction with beatdowns. So if you want to say NWO, okay. The end of this match, or the end of this show, reminded me a lot of when there was an NWO attack and the whole WCW locker room would come out and run off the members of the NWO. But 
if you look closely, you can kind of see little seeds being planted. So am I right about that? Are we going to get some kind of new age horsemanish faction led by Cody with MJF and Hangman and Spears and Tully Blanchard being the overall manager? The J.J. Dillon, if you will. Am I wrong? Am I right? And do you want to see it? That's very important. Do you want to see it or is it too much of a, of a retread? You know, I, I know TNA has done it with Fortune. They've done this in the past, here and there in companies. Do you want to see it? That's my big question coming off this show. What do you think of Inner Circle? Put it down in the comments. Do you like the name? Do you like where it's going? What do they need to do to get you into it if you don't like where it's going or how it looks right now? Put your thoughts down in the comments. I will respond. I'm very interested to see what people have to say about this. The great thing about AEW Dynamite to me, the great thing about watching this episode two, episode one, we saw the beginning of this. Imagine if you were alive when, say, the NWA started. Let's say you, WCW, okay, the WWE, you're here at the ground level with me, and we're talking about this. We can talk about all this stuff. It's all fresh and all brand new. Where's it going to go? Do we like what we're seeing? Leave it down in the comments. Anything you want to comment about AEW, put it down there. I'm game. Let's talk about it. That's all I got. AEW Dynamite. I give it a thumbs up. I thought it was a great show. I don't think it was as good as the first show, but that was hot. That was really hot. It was the debut. Of course it was hot. But to follow it up with a good show like this, which was really good, I think was great. So AEW, two out of two for me, two in a row. They're killing it. They're killing it. And looking at the competition recently, it looks like a lot of their fans are upset. So I'm expecting a bigger number for AEW this week as opposed to last week. Put anything you choose to put down in the comments. Consider liking this video and consider subscribing to the channel if you aren't subscribed already. This is not only a pro wrestling channel, but if you like the pro wrestling that I'm going to give to you, you can maybe dictate where I go in the future. So anything you have to say, any comments, any thoughts, throw it down and we'll talk about it. Until next time, Blading for Truth.